In this tips and tricks tutorial for Forest Pack, we look at the many options for scattering objects on uneven terrain. It's not often the case that we place scattered objects on a truly planar surface. Instead, in many scenes we have banks, mounds, hills, and even vertiginous mountains. Forest Pack not only allows you to place geometry on non-planar surfaces with a minimum of effort, but also gives you a high level of control, with the ability to adjust the density and scale of the scattered objects based on the altitude and slope angle of the terrain. Before looking at how to create this example, we'll take a look at the surface controls in more detail. So to start a new Forest Pack object using a surface, simply click on Forest Pack from the Create panel and pick a surface from the scene. To edit or update surface settings, add and manage multiple surfaces, and add surfaces to an existing Forest Pack object, open the surface rollout. At the top of the rollout is the surface list. This allows you to add extra surfaces by clicking on the plus button, or add multiple surfaces. If you change a surface and wish to update Forest Pack, simply click Refresh. If you'd like Forest to update automatically, or if the surface is animated and you need the scattered objects to follow the geometry, turn on Auto. Surfaces can be used in two modes. The default is XY, which projects objects along their Z-axis until they meet the surface geometry. This is ideal for landscapes without steep inclines. For steep inclines, or geometry with slopes greater than 90 degrees from the XY plane, UV mode uses the mapping coordinates of the surface to distribute the objects. In this tutorial we're going to focus on the XY mode. We'll explain UV modes in more detail in a future Tips and Tricks instalment. It's worth mentioning at this point that XY mode uses the surface's face normals direction to place objects, so if a surface doesn't appear to be working, try inverting the normals to see if they're facing in the correct direction. This can often be a problem with surfaces imported from other applications. Moving down the interface, the direction slider allows you to align the segments in relation to the surface's face normals. At 0%, the scattered objects follow the surface normal. At 100%, they always face upward, and at minus 100, they face down. When using XY mode, if surfaces are placed one above the other, there are some differences in the way that scattered objects are placed, depending on if the surfaces have been combined into a single mesh object or if they've been individually added in the surface list. If surfaces are added separately, which we call stacked, then each surface will receive scattered objects. Neither surface affects the other. If, however, the surfaces have been combined into a single edit poly object, only the highest polygons will receive scattered objects. Faces below are masked. When altitude limit is on, scattered objects will only appear within the height range defined by the top and bottom values. If you don't want a sharply defined boundary, or if you want to create layers or other effects, then a fall off curve gives you precise control over the density of scattered objects across the range. The rate and extent of the fall off effect is defined by the curve editor, where the x axis plots the altitude range between the top and bottom values. The scale fall off curve works in a similar way allowing you to control the scale of scattered objects over an altitude range. You could, for example, reduce the size of trees at a higher altitude, where in reality, oxygen is thinner. Below this, activating slope range allows you to use the angle of the surface to limit the distribution of scattered objects. The minimum and maximum values define the angle measured in degrees, where 0 is fully horizontal and 90 is completely vertical. As with altitude range, you are able to use fall off curves to precisely control the density and scale of scattered objects based on the angle of the underlying surface. So that's the theory of the surface controls. Let's put these to use on a simple scene. Open Terrain Start Max from the downloads for this tutorial. Then create a new forest object by clicking on Create I2 Forest Pack and then clicking on the terrain object in the scene. Now let's add some trees. Go to the geometry rollout click on Add Multiple Custom Objects and select Tree 1, Tree 2 and Tree 3 from the scene. This terrain is huge at 17 km square. To optimise the scene and prevent Forest Pack from creating trees that are outside of the rendered view, go to the Camera Rollout and assign Camera 2. Turn on Limit to Visibility and set the back offset to 0.5 km and the far clipping plane to 6 km. This will limit the trees to within the camera frustum. Next, since this is such a large area, we want to choose the distribution map that yields the largest number of trees. Open the distribution rollout and set the map type to full and set the density to 0.5 km. The full distribution map always creates a grid-like pattern of trees. To break this up, we'll go to the transform rollout and enable translation. Set the minimum values for X and Y to minus 200% and the maximum value to 200%. Next, enable rotation and accept the default settings and also scale and set the minimum to 75% and 
and the maximum to 110%. Now let's open the surface rollout. We don't want the trees to go all the way to the top of this mountain, so enable limited in the altitude range group and set the top to 1.544 kilometers and the bottom to 0.46. We want the trees to get less dense as the oxygen thins out, so turn on density fall off and scale fall off and reduce the scale and density as the trees ascend the mountain. To do this add an extra point about 3 quarters of the way along the curve and at 100% on the x-axis bring the value down to zero. We also don't want trees growing on very steep surfaces like the cliffs, so turn on limited by slope range and change the maximum value to 44 degrees. You can also adjust the density based on the slope angle by turning on density fall off and adjusting the curve. So now that's done, we'll add some boulders on the shoreline. Just like before, select a new forest pack object by selecting the terrain surface. From the geometry rollout, click the library button and select some of the stones that come with forest pack. They're a little small, so let's turn these rocks into boulders. Turn up the global scale to 400%. We really only want these boulders to appear around the lake. To limit them to roughly this area, Open the areas rollout, click to add a new spline area and pick spline boulders from the scene. Turn off the surface area layer to restrict the scatter to within this spline. Note that although the surface has been switched off in the areas rollout, it's still used to position the objects on the Z axis. Now set the distribution map to full and the density to 0.65 kilometers. Add some randomization by going to the transform rollout. Turn on translation and enter minus 200 to 200% for the X and Y axis. Turn on rotation and use the default settings. Turn on scale and set the X minimum value to 20%. To restrict the boulders to just around the shoreline of the lake, we'll turn on the surface fall off controls. So turn on limited in the altitude range group and set the top value to 0.5 kilometers and set the bottom value to 0.445. Now to create some size variation based on altitude, turn on the scale fall off Click on edit to open the curve editor and set the curve with a low value at the start and the end and a hump in the middle. This will create smaller rocks nearer the water and into the tree line. We also don't want rocks on steeper slopes, they'd roll off, so turn on slope range and decrease the maximum value. Finally, let's combine surfaces with some spline painting layers and fall off to quickly add some grass to the shore near the camera. Create a new forest object by assigning the train as a surface. Go to the areas rollout and turn off the surface layer. For this example we'll use a preset. Go to the geometry rollout and click on library. Go to presets, wild meadows and select a preset with the large suffix. These are optimised for large areas. And still in the areas rollout, click to add a new paint area and click the paintbrush icon to start painting. If necessary open the brush options to adjust the brush size. Paint grass on the shore. Don't worry about being too precise along the waterline we we'll use altitude limits to prevent the grass growing in the water. So once you've finished painting, open the surfaces rollout, turn on limited by altitude range and set the top value to 0.616 and the bottom value to 0.457. Create a small fall off near the water by turning on density fall off and opening the curve editor. Add a narrow trough. If you wanted to create a path around the lake, you could also add a second trough immediately after the first. And that concludes this scene. If you want to, you could keep going using these same techniques to add further shrubs, reeds, rocks and foliage around the lake. Hopefully you've seen that using these techniques gives you a high level of control over the distribution of objects on surfaces. Though this example focused on trees in a landscape, the same principle can easily be applied to myriad less obvious uses. Stay tuned for more Forest Pack tutorials. Meanwhile, for more information about many aspects of Forest Pack's features, please see our reference section or visit the tutorials page for more tips and tricks videos as well as in-depth tutorials.